All right, well, we already had our in-person lecture today, but I, because the projector wasn't working at school, I thought I'd put together a little short tutorial on how to import a material from some website that has free materials on it into Unreal Engine. It's, um, it's unfortunately not as easy as just like drag and drop, like boom, and you get the material because these things are split up into different, into different uh, pictures, basically, is what they, what they work out to. So I went to a website called Polyhaven, and on Polyhaven, you can click on textures, and there's all sorts of interesting textures there. Um, yeah, just find one that, that looks interesting to you, like maybe this brick wall here. Click on that, and uh, if you click on the zip option here, then it allows you to choose which um, which formats you're going to download the uh, the thing in. Let's just try this all with PNGs here. Uh, I don't think we need these files either. You see, at 8K resolution, these things are half a gig each, which is uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we go ahead and download it, and we're going to save it here. You can see I've been downloading some other textures here. And uh, while that is downloading, I'm going to come over here into Unreal Engine. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this one Brick Wall. Brick Wall. Just so that all the different pictures are going to be in there. And the reason why it works this way is when you make a material, uh, each of the different layers, the, the, uh, the actual picture itself, the height map, um, the ambient occlusion, they're all saved as different pictures. They're textures. The texture is a picture, really. It's a 2D picture. And it's up to you to actually make the material and bring it all together. The good news is it's as easy as just connecting the the diffuse color to the color and connecting connecting the normal to the normal and connecting the ambient occlusion to the ambient occlusion with um, one one little uh, twist here. So it has now downloaded. I'm going to open it up. Actually, let me extract it first to, uh, over here. Over here and right click and extract it to a new folder. And there we are. And there we are. And and so here we have all of these textures, and I'm just going to drag them into Unreal Engine like this. There is an import button you can use, uh, but just dragging and dropping works pretty well. So. Um, you'll see it takes a while because it's half a gig for one material. So it's going to take a while. Uh, some terminology, the um, AO is ambient occlusion. This is a combined ambient occlusion, roughness, and metal. Uh, so technically I didn't need to download this one. It's, it was a waste of 53 megs of hard drive space. Um, and we got two different normal maps, which I guess is also kind of uh, redundant. Um, okay, so here we have it has been imported here and we are going to right click and choose make a new material and we're going to call this one a brick mat or something like that open it up and i'm going to drag the tab over to the i'm going to snap it to the right here normally i do these on two different monitors so that um because you see how these things get really crowded and stuff uh let's just widen this out a little bit there we go and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just drag over each one of these textures one at a time over here. And so the the most important one is the diffuse, which is this one. Drag that in, it creates an automatic texture sample for you. You could do this the slow way. You could hold down T and click and then, you know, over here select, you know, nah. It's easier to just drag it in. So you drag in the diffuse color, which is like the actual, like a picture, like if you took a photograph of a brick wall, that's that's what it looks like. And so we just hook up the RGB pin to the base color pin, and there we go, done. Um, next up is gonna be metallic, uh, well, let's save that one. Let's do the normal map. So DirectX and, and OpenGL have a different format for, um, for normal maps, and uh, I'm gonna use the OpenGL one here. Show you what that looks like. A normal map uh, controls on a kind of a per pixel basis on the wall what angle that spot on the wall is. And, and this allows you to do things like simulate cracks and like textures and things like that without having to have a billion triangles for it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pull that into normal and then we got that done. Um, and in fact, if I just drag this material out here now and save it, you'll see it's already like kind of coming together, right? 
So you can see it's already got a normal map on it that causes the uh, things to reflect light. And if I were to switch this with the other normal map, the DirectX normal map here, that way, save, you'll see that the lighting changes. Right. So it looks like the DirectX one is the correct one here. Okay, so I'm going to purge the OpenGL one. Um, as always with these things, just experiment. You know, if you don't know the difference between DirectX and OpenGL, don't worry about it. Just try both. Yeah, see which one looks right. Uh, with game development, it's always good to just experiment and try things. Uh, okay, so over here, let's see, here's our ambient occlusion. But rather than ambient occlusion, we want to use AO roughness. Where are you? Uh, here we go. AO uh, roughness and metallic. So if it's arm, that means AO is first. So let's try that out. Okay, so there's three different channels in um, every picture. There's red, there's green, there's blue. And so a lot of times game developers or the artists like to put together three different textures if they're monochrome into one texture. That way you only have to load one picture instead of three. It's three times more efficient. Uh, the trouble is like if they don't tell you which order, like which one's the red pin, you know, then, uh, then you don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hook up the red pin to the base color and save it and just see what it looks like here. I'm like, okay, so that's a black and white image. That's... That probably is ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion, like we talked about in class today, is kind of the way you, you get more detail, more accuracy out of ambient light. Ambient light is just this light that's just kind of around in the room. There's no, I don't have any lights on in this room. There's the monitor here. You can see the monitor lighting me. But like behind me, like there's just kind of light bouncing around. And if you look around your room, you'll see that in areas like the corners and um, like in between books and things like that, they're darker. And so ambient occlusion is a way of sort of simulating that way that ambient light works when, when it's kind of bouncing around. It doesn't go into cor cracks and corners as much as it does big open flat surfaces like the wall back here. And uh, in fact, you can see behind me up here, you know, there's a little dark area in the corner, uh, but the wall itself is, has more ambient light in it. And so ambient occlusion simulates that. So I'm going to drag that over here into ambient occlusion, and I'm going to put the brick pattern back in here and save that. And let's detach this and just see if you can take a look over here and see if you can see the difference from the ambient occlusion, see if, see if it makes any difference. Yeah, very small, very subtle difference. I'll put it back on and see if you can see the difference. Like look at the cracks and see them get a little bit darker. Very subtle, okay. And ambient occlusion oftentimes is that way. It just adds a little bit of realism and detail to surfaces. So the R stands for roughness. So, uh, 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 yeah, sorry, not the RGB. Sorry, let's do this correctly. The R channel is ambient occlusion. There we go. And then the green channel is probably roughness. So we do that, and then that's going to change the roughness on a per pixel basis. It's not very rough now at all. And then the B is the metallic, which is it's not going to be metallic at all. The the there's. You can see in here there's no blue in that in that image. It's all red and green and yellow when, when they mix together. So we do that and it doesn't change anything because if I were to just connect up the blue channel here and just take a look at it, you can see that it's base. There's okay. There I guess yeah. It's it's basically all black, right? It's not it's not metal. Brick is not metal, so we don't need to worry about that at all really. So metallic roughness and ambient occlusion. And there we go. So uh, choo, 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 choo. there we go. And so here we have a nice looking material in our world. And that's it. So that's your assignment. Uh, you can do the roughness separately if you want. And you can do the ambient occlusion separately if you want. If you look at the Polyhaven website, you can break out the ambient occlusion and the roughness separately. But um, since they're monochrome maps, a lot of times we just combine them into one uh, one image with red, green, and blue, and we just split them out there. Uh, notice they don't have the metal map at all because none of it's metal. So um, when I downloaded this, I technically could have just unchecked that and unchecked that and unchecked that and had the base color, displacement map, which I haven't shown yet, normal map, 
and the A R M. Sometimes it's M R A O. You know, just look at the look at the letters, and then you know what order the the things come in in the, in the different channels. And so that would have cut the, the download down to 300 megs, which is still excessive. Like just 10, 10 materials, and you're at three gigs, right? Like these th these projects are brutal on your uh, hard drive space. So if you're doing development, um, especially on a less powerful machine, make them make them one K textures. Then it's seven megs. <laughs> You know, so it's a 50 times almost a smaller um, thing. So just use the lower quality. It's fine. Uh, this you're, you're not making the next Red Dead Redemption or whatever. So uh, when you do that, just remember, come over here, Polyhaven, pick a texture you like, pick 1K if you like, choose zip. And then these are the these are the four you want. And not all the not all the images on here have all of those channels. If we go to wood, we go to zip. Uh, now that one's the same. Let's see if I can find an example of something. Wood planks gray. Uh, okay, all these are the same, but uh, yeah, sometimes sometimes you're going to see textures that are missing some of these things, um, just because they don't need them. So just be aware of that. And that's it. So it's it's unfortunately not at, quite as simple as drag and drop. Like you, you don't just import a material. A lot of the times, if you're coming from a website like this, if you go to the Unreal Marketplace, yeah, you can actually import Unreal assets directly into Unreal, and that's kind of nice. But um, from these sort of like, there's all these like free game development websites, and they usually just give you a set of pictures, and then it's your job to come into Unreal Engine, import the pictures. I put them into their own directory, so they're all together. And then you just kind of connect the dots, click, 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 and there you go. And that's how you make a nice looking material in Unreal Engine, uh, quick and easy. Until next time.